Warning, what you think you know about bass could kill you. Or just slow down your learning, but that sucks too! I'm Josh with Bass Buzz, and we're gonna test out five common beginner bass myths to see if they're confirmed or busted so they don't hold back your playing. Let's bust it up! Myth. Bass is boring. Bass players just stand at the back playing the same note for five minutes and nobody even knows that they're there. They're just there to bring water bottles to the lead guitar player, right? Was that boring? I think not. Myth busted. But the thing is that even when you're not blowing minds on bass, being the bass player means that you get to support and glue the whole band together, which makes everything feel good. Check it out, here's a song that we all know and love. But something is horribly wrong, right? Where did the bass track go? It's hollow and empty without the bass track, right? That's why even simple bass isn't boring. It feels good. Myth. Bassists are failed guitarists, aka bass is easier than guitar. There's some truth to the idea that bass is easier if you're just starting out. For example, to learn even a beginner version of Bad Moon Rising by CCR, you have to learn these three chords, D, A, and G, which means you gotta get three fingers on your fretting hand to do the right thing at the same time on these tiny little strings, and you have to learn the rhythm and the strumming pattern and how to hold your pick, which all sounds like this. To play the same thing on bass, all you have to do is play these three notes, which you could do all with one finger on each hand, and the track still sounds great, even with that simple bass line. Once you get started though, bass is just as challenging as guitar, and we bass players have to focus on things that a lot of guitar players get away with ignoring, like having killer groove. A guitarist can drift off time a little bit and it still doesn't make the whole band fall apart. Guitar players. Fired. But if the bass player doesn't play in time, it's total mayhem. What? You're fired. It was good, right? As a bass player, you also have to learn restraint and tastefulness, which, let's face it, a lot of guitar players lack. Let's use My Girl by The Temptations as an example. Here's how a guitar player might play bass over this song. This is how it might sound better with a more bass player-y kind of mindset.
So because guitar and bass have different musical roles and challenges, I'm gonna say myth busted. Myth, you can't play bass if you have small hands. Obviously myth busted, but there are some tricks to making whatever size hands you've got work for bass. First is to know that your hands are gonna stretch more the more you play bass. So you might think that your hand size is holding you back, but it could just be your inexperience with stretching. Second, if you can't stretch far enough for something, you can use micro shifting, which means taking little tiny shifts within a position. So I'm gonna do that on a C major scale. Just watch me for now and then I'll show you how to do this. So if I play this with stretching, it looks like this. So the index finger I used on those second fret notes is still back on the second fret, even though I'm playing the fifth fret note with my pinky. So if I weren't able to do that, I could use micro shifting. So I'm gonna use the same fingering, but I'm gonna do tiny little shifts to get my fingers where I want them. So now I don't have to have a massive hand, I can just do this. Okay, grab your bass if you don't already have it. I'm gonna actually show you how to do this. So first I'm gonna show you the fingering we're gonna use, starting with the middle finger on the third fret of the A string to pinky finger on the fifth fret. Then we go to D string, second fret with the index, middle on the third fret, and pinky on the fifth fret. And then on the G string, we go index on the second fret, ring finger on the fourth fret, and pinky on the fifth fret. So all together, that's middle, pinky, index, middle, pinky, index, ring, pinky. Okay, so first try playing that with a stretching approach. So you're gonna keep your middle finger back on the third fret when you put your pinky on the fifth fret. And then when we go to the D string, you've got your index on the second fret, and then you keep it there as you go to middle on the third fret, pinky on the fifth fret, and then same thing on the G string, keep your index on the second fret while you go to ring finger on the fourth fret and pinky on the fifth fret. So for some of you, that feels really, really, really hard or maybe you can't even do it, right? So that's what micro shifting is for. So now let's do the same thing, same fingering, but you're gonna start on your middle finger and then just shift your hand over to get your pinky on that fifth fret note and then shift your hand back to get your index on the second fret. Then you can probably get your middle finger right there on the third fret, and then we'll do a little shift to get the pinky on the fifth fret, and then same thing, shift back for the second fret, shift up a little for the fourth fret, and then grab the fifth fret with your pinky. And that's micro shifting. Okay, just for fun, let's try doing that in rhythm together. We'll do it twice the first time. Try doing it as stretchy as you can. So try keeping your index on the second fret even when you're going to the fifth fret note on that string. Okay, four clicks and then we'll start playing one note every two beats just the way it's written. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Stretching, two, three, four. One, two, three. So my index finger isn't moving when I go to the pinky notes. And then finish on the starting note. Okay, that was probably really hard for a lot of you, so now let's try it with micro shifting. Just keep your hand as tight as you need to and just move your hand around. Here we go, one, two, three, four. And when you play like this, it doesn't matter how big your hands are because you can just shift. Sweet. Now would be a good time to click subscribe and then click the bell so that you actually get notified when new lessons come out. My third and final small hands tip. If your hands are really tiny, you may want to consider getting a short scale bass. The frets are closer and easier to reach and short scale basses are still totally legit. Myth, real basses don't use a pick.
no, myth busted. But wait, I smell a revenge myth in the air. What about pick is better than fingers? Myth busted again. But the great thing is that you don't have to pick. Ha 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 ha. You can learn to play with fingers and a pick if you want to. But like most bass teachers, I recommend that you start with your fingers because it's a more common and versatile technique. Myth. It takes a long time to learn bass. To help us test this myth, we've got Dan the Human Guinea Pig. Dan took my beginner course, which took him step by step through basic technique, theory, and bass essentials. And after 30 days, he went from no bass skills to being able to play Don't Stop Believin', Roxanne, I Feel Good, and was jamming with other musicians. Any instrument takes a long time to master, but you can be having fun on bass and jamming with other people in a pretty short time. So myth busted. So what's the point of busting all these bass myths? I want you to realize that playing bass is fun, and there's no reason that you can't learn. So click like on this video and subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon. Myth busted. Myth busted. Ha ha ha. Myth busted. 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 <laughs>